Hi friends, today we will talk about the lighter. They could be different, traditional, with a combustible substance, electric, with a filament, or with an electric arc, and this kind. Here is a realization of my fantasy. Lighter with an electric arc plus flashlight and plus, what do you think? Well, of course the electric shocker. I'm demonstrating it. In my opinion, combining these three very useful options in one body hasn't come in mind of Chinese manufacturers yet. And how I managed to install all into this small box? It's a separate story. All started when I got a small but quite good 3D printer. Like any others, at first I began to print all sorts of trinkets, vases, animals, again vases and animals. And when it bored me, other thoughts came into my head. Then, searching at the sites where you can download free models for printing, I came across a cover for an e-cigarette. I calculated the dimensions and started printing. The printer is very simple. I just uploaded the file to a memory card, inserted it in the printer and pressed one button. The box came out quite good, despite the fact that the printer is mostly designed for children. It comes assembled with all the necessary components, even with an SD card, and most important, doesn't need adjustment. A link to the printer will be found in the description. On the box there is a beautiful pattern, but I didn't manage to paint it properly. I will do it some other time. Initially, there was an idea to do something like a Zippo lighter with a hinged lid, but I didn't find the desired ready-made template. Because I can't model myself yet, I found the most suitable box for my purposes. I printed out the box and a half. This half will be an upper part. I took the loop from a non-working cheap lighter, cut it here and there, and I got this mechanism. Then I adjusted it to my box and after some suffering, everything is ready. Yes, not nice and neat, but it works. Now the most important thing, the electronics. The box is pocket-sized, quite comfortable and pleasant to the touch. We have to put into it a battery, a charge protection system for battery, a charger from USB, a flashlight, a high-voltage converter to produce a burning arc, and a high-voltage multiplier, which together with a converter forms a not-too-much-powerful but still electric shocker. Additionally, we need a switch and a button. The switch is dual mode. The first mode is a flashlight, the second mode is unlocking. And when we press the button, the lighter starts working. This decision was made to avoid unprompted turning on of the lighter in the pocket. This is clear, but what about the shocker? The pins on which will form high voltage discharges are located on the lighter cap. Voltage multiplier located in the cap, it is completely filled with epoxy resin. If the cap is open, the switch is at unlocking mode and the button is pressed then this device can be used as a lighter. If you close the cap and do the same, you get a shocker. Let's look at the circuit. Here not drawn a system of protection and battery charge. We will talk about this a little later. I think about a flashlight, everything is clear. 
The converter generates a high voltage. At the output, we get a burning arc. When we close the cap, the high voltage through the corresponding contacts goes to the multiplier, at the output of which we get high voltage discharges. And now, let's go in more detail. There are many options of power source. Initially, I wanted to use a lithium battery from an electronic cigarette because they are high current type. The converter circuit, about which we will talk later, devours a current of up to 1.5 amperes from the battery. But in the end, due to the size of the case, it was decided to use a pair of parallelly connected lithium-ion batteries with a capacity of 200 milliamperes hour each. I removed the control boards from the batteries, connected them in parallel, and connected the finished assembly of two batteries to the board. This board provides protection against short circuits, deep discharge and overcharge. For this board, the protection actuation current is within 1.8 amperes. As a result, we have a 3.7 volt battery with a capacity of about 400 milliamperes hour. In theory, this should be enough for 15 minutes of continuous operation of the lighter. The charger, or rather the charging circuit, is based on the popular TP4056 chip. This version of the board has a controller for the battery, but in my case it isn't used, since the protection current of that controller is very small, and when the converter was turned on, the circuit went into protection. The board has an indication of charge, and you can charge the lithium battery from the voltage of 5 volts. The maximum charge current is about 1 ampere. This is too much for my batteries, so I replace the current setting resistor by 3.3 kilo ohm, reducing the maximum charge current to 450 milliamperes. Voltage converter. This part forms the high frequency high voltage. At the output, the voltage is more than 3000 volts. The temperature of the arc is very high, and it can easily burn combustible materials. The circuit is a regular blocking oscillator on a bipolar transistor. A ready-made transformer was used. You can buy it at AliExpress. Links will be in the description. Of course, it was possible to wind the transformer by myself, but I was just lazy. But those interested in the description will find links to my videos with the process of assembling of the same converters and winding of high-voltage transformers. Transformer is sectional and was filled with resin. During the short-term work, the transistor almost doesn't heat up, so no need to set in on the radiator. The multiplier. A high-voltage multiplier is hidden in the lighter cap. All this part is filled with epoxy. The multiplier includes a pair of ceramic capacitors at 3 kV. The capacity of each is 330 picofarads. I connect it to in parallel to receive that value. Here were used high voltage diode columns KTS106G with reverse voltage of 10,000 volts. These are old diodes, but there are many new analogs. High voltage is applied to the pins that are located on the cover. The distance between them is only 0.5 cm. The distance could be more. The discharges can stretch up to 1.5 cm. But in my case, this distance depends on the design features of the multiplier and the cover. Parallel to the output of the multiplier, a pair of series connected resistors is installed. Each is 30 mega ohms. They discharge the residual voltage of the multiplier after turning off the shocker. Flashlight is optional but desirable. It includes five bright 3 mm LEDs. Each LED is connected through its own current limiting resistor of 22 ohms. Of course, can be used one common resistor, but in this case, the LED's illumination may differ. The flashlight is assembled on a separate board and located at the very bottom of the lighter. It shines very well. In the darkness, it's quite possible to light the path. But also, it consumes a lot, about 200 milliamperes. For two hours of continuous operation, the battery will completely discharge. 
Well, that's all. This video also came to an end. A link to the project archive, components for assembly, and links to buy arc lighters can be found in the description. If you have additional questions, ask in our group at SocialNet. Please rate this video and share it with your friends. I say goodbye until new meetings. With you was Kasyan TV.